Welcome, I am your uh, Ward 4 Councilman Robbie Gard, and today I have your Parks and Recreation Director, Doug Gannon. In our council videos, we hope to cover the city services interesting to you. So without further ado, Doug Gannon. Well, hey, Doug. Thank you. Appreciate it, Robbie. Appreciate Glad to have you here today. All right. Great talking to you. So beforehand, I was kind of talking a little bit, and I want to know all things Doug Gannon. Where are you from? Where you grew up? How you came to Cape? And uh, tell us about your family. Okay. Well, I, I'm a, uh, I was born and raised in DeSoto, Missouri. I uh, graduated high school and came to college at, at Southeast in 1986. Um, got my degree in Parks and Recreation Administration, um, and uh, then I got my master's degree in Public Administration. So I uh, was fortunate enough to, to get a job with the City of Cape Girardeau um, in 1993 as I was finishing my master's degree, mm -hmm. um, and I worked for the City of Cape Girardeau as the aquatic supervisor from 1993 until 2004. Wow. Um, met my wife in there and got married in 2000. So um, it really, it never intended on, on Cape Girardeau being my permanent home. Um, but after my wife and I met, she was at the time the volleyball coach at the university. Um, and uh, one thing just led to another, and Cape Girardeau has been our home since then. And, and it probably always will be. Two kids later, a um, couple different careers later, and we're still here, and, and, we, and we love Cape Girardeau. And you've been back with the city since? I, I went to St. Francis Medical Center for a period of 16 years um, in 2004. Um, and, and as we know, COVID changed everybody's lives. So um, unfortunately, my position there was eliminated whenever uh, COVID happened. Uh, it, it really took a toll on healthcare. Right. Um, so um, I did a little, little stint in the corporate world. Uh, I worked for a company by the name of Centos Corporation. Mm -hmm. I was a service supervisor with them for a period of five months. Realized corporate world just wasn't what I really wanted to do. So I yeah. had an opportunity to come back to the city in 21. Um, and uh, I came back uh, to work as the assistant recreation division manager, uh, which was a position that was worked under Penny Williams, who's the recreation division manager. And then the director position came open in September and uh, you know, decided that was what I wanted to do. So went through the process and luckily I was the one selected and it's been a, it's been a great 15 months in this role. I started uh, September of, of 21 and, and here we sit in November and it's like it was yesterday I got started. So it's been a lot of fun so far. That's amazing. What Doug won't tell you is that he came to back to the city of Cape in, with open arms. We, we bring him back with a wealth of knowledge and uh, the level of integrity and, and uh, the connections that he's, he's made uh, in doing great things in our community, uh, it was a no-brainer to, to uh, have Doug back and, then, and also see him rise to the uh, Parks and Rec director. So I, from my perspective, man, I'm glad COVID happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one said no one ever. No, but uh, we're so glad to have you back and, and uh, glad to have you today and, and proud of the things that you were doing. And, uh, Talking a little bit about that, um, we know that uh, PRS-1, which is our Parks and Recreation uh, Stormwater Initiative, uh, was first passed in 2008 mm -hmm. uh, by the voters. Uh, a group of our Parks and, Rec uh, Parks and Recreation uh, Foundation and supporters came together uh, and said, we want to do more for our parks. We, we want to we be top notch, not only for our area, but for the state of Missouri and with unanimous, pretty much unanimous voters, uh, voter approval passed in 2008. Um, some of the bedrock projects of that, Doug, I know them, but they're the, the golf course. Uh, golf course improvements, uh, the golf course got a complete makeover. Right. Uh, which those of you that play our golf course know that we have a, a outstanding golf course. Uh, that gets a lot of play and, and is very popular in the area. Um, so I, I wasn't here then, but I got to right. enjoy seeing all of it unfold. Um, so yeah, we completely redid some tee boxes, did the fairways, um, really did some nice upgrades to the golf course. I kind of call the PRS one from, from, and I said this before, I, I call that what, our, what is our bedrock mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of where we're at today. Um, and in 2018, uh, is that correct? Uh, 2018. We passed mm -hmm. PRS2, uh, and um, we're four years into that. You want to kind of give us a, an update on, on where we're at with PRS2 and some of those projects? Sure, yeah, th and, and things, and, you know, to your point, Robbie, things really took off with, with PRS1. You know, the, the, the voters really embraced that initiative um, because quality of life and, and, and parks and recreation facilities, programs, trails, 
um, parks, green space is very important to the citizens of this community. So we really have embraced that and tried to deliver on that and, and we appreciate the confidence of the voters and, and, and allowing us to do the things that we're doing. You know, PRS1, Cape Splash was a part oh, of that. that's right. Um, you know, we expanded the Osage Center. Mm -hmm. Um, Renovation to uh, arena, the arena building. Yes, was as part of that Shawnee as well? Park Center came yeah, out of that. So, correct. so lots of, and we built six, seven, and eight uh, fields at Shawnee Park Sports oh, yeah, Complex right. as a yeah, result yeah. of that. So, lots of good things came out of PRS one. So, the momentum carried into two, into PRS two, which passed in 2018. That's a 15 year initiative. So, so what's exciting is, is I, I would venture to say that my my colleagues around the state of Missouri probably did not have an opportunity to come into position. Where, where this community is, is, is embracing parks and recreation like they are. Yeah. You know, they have the resources we have and to have the, the, the forward momentum and the master plan in place that we have is phenomenal. Yeah. There's probably not a lot of people that, that, that can say they have that. Uh, so the marquee projects for PRS2, um, right now we're working on uh, central pool renovation. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and we've got the Jefferson pool that we're gonna be partnering with the school district. We're excited about that partnership because that's gonna bring a lot to the community and we're building a community park behind Jefferson Pool. Uh, so that's gonna be a joint venture. It's gonna be used as a playground for the school and then it's also gonna be a community park. Uh, so that'll be a PRS2 project um, and the central pool renovation will start really quickly um, and we're expecting to have that completed by the fall of 2023. That's amazing. Um, so we're gonna build uh, part of that to another project was a youth sports complex. And um, we've identified a probable location at Shawnee Park, uh, which is gonna be really nice because that that's from from a logistic standpoint it just makes sense to go there everything there yes the, so we're going to go right to the west of the current uh, the current complex so you know we don't have to repeat uh, the fleet we don't have to build new maintenance buildings we're going to be able to use all the resources that are right there um, have a limited concession operation so so that's going to be a great synergy using the existing facility which was built in 1997 uh, with the new facility that we'll be building um, in the upcoming years. Um, so, so those resources are gonna really feed off one another. Um, lot, we got trail improvements planned. Mm -hmm. We've got an expansion to the Shawnee Park Center planned. And we got a phase three plan for Cape Splash, wow. uh, which is gonna be a nice addition. So, so lots of exciting things happening. Um, in this community and, and, uh, and, and again, I think that the citizens are really going to enjoy watching all these projects unfold as we move forward. Yeah, and, and we've been trying to get out in the community and do a lot of presentations on these just so everybody kind of knows what's going yeah. on. Um, so so we're, we're, we're really excited. Well, to that point, I think a lot of people right now, if you're driving by uh, on Broadway or the corner there of Perryville and, and Broadway, uh, the Dan Kotner uh, Band Amphitheater area, uh, is going to be open uh, for next spring mm -hmm. and we'll have mm -hmm. concerts there again. Cannot wait for that. Uh, the Cap Hall Lagoon, Cap Hall Pond, mm -hmm. it looks amazing. Uh, the work that they've done there, um, outside digging out all the baseballs and frisbees, <laughs> it looks to be uh, on, uh, on yeah. par to be able to uh, start, I guess, filling up uh, mm -hmm. as we speak. Really. It's, it's it's filling now. Everybody asks me, how are you going to fill the pond? <laughs> it's, it's Mother Nature is filling. Mother it. Nature. And, and what's what's a, kind of an interesting fact is there's a lot of, of stormwater shed from the from the west part of the town that mm -hmm. goes into the pond. Um, so it's filling quickly. If we have a rain, it'll 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 go up four or five feet. So it, it's going to it's coming along nicely. The Capitol Hall Park Master Plan was a uh. big part of, of this PRS initiative. Yes. And part of that was PRS one part was number two. So PRS one was the shelter three on top of the hill where the old swimming pool was mm -hmm. and that playground, the splash pad, shelter one down in the main parking area and then that permanent restroom. So that, and we did some, uh, some work on Kappa Hall Field as well. Yeah. Um, so phase two is the amphitheater, the pond and then Cherry Hill area. Yeah. Uh, oh, so. that's right. Cherry Hill area and the Rose Garden mm -hmm. is, I've saw recently that that's being uh, uh, renovated and work being done up there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got some exciting, exciting people in the community that are, that are, that are gonna help us plant nice plants in there and maintain it and, and that's gonna be a really nice area and Cherry Hill's gonna be really great. The thing is, is our, our parks and recreation maintenance staff, our park maintenance staff, are the ones that do all this work. So they, they've got tremendous skill set. Uh, on uh, the way here today, I was driving down uh, Broadway and I look over and you see this team of of guys and gals with their leaf blowers on, blowing leaves out, and and to have the park ready for the weekend, mm -hmm. um, with all the people coming into town, uh, getting closer to the holidays, it's just amazing the the work that they do. 
Speaking of maintenance, how, how many do you have, um, how many in maintenance workers do we have in the city of Cape? We've got 65 full-time employees in, in, in Parks and Recreation Department. That's amazing. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure the exact number of park maintenance staff. Yeah. Um, there's several, several skilled guys over there. We've got a park supervisor who just is really phenomenal and, and keeping on top of stuff. We've got crew leaders and we've got senior maintenance workers and we've got other, other employees in that area that they mow the parks, do all the construction, repair everything, clean all the restrooms, clean the shelters, do park trash, we do trash downtown. Yeah. So, so a lot of things that we're involved in, I'm still realizing things that we're involved in. Because um, you know, we've, got, I've got, we've got three division managers that have been here for 30 years each. Scott and Penny and Brock. I was gonna say, um, the, 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 not to get sacrilegious, but the holy trinity of parks and rec people, uh, Scott, Penny, and, and Brock. They do a great job. They do. And, and, and my biggest fear right now is, is, is their retirement, which, right. you know, uh, so we, we, I, that, that's one of my long range plans is succession. Right. Um, so right. that, that's certainly something we have to be astute to moving forward. Um, but anyway, those, those guys do a great job yeah. um, and they manage all those different areas. Um, so I, I, I still tell them every time we meet, I didn't know we did that. You right. know, so, so this, you know, the riverfront, all the downtown mm -hmm. projects we do, we partner with events downtown. Uh, we do the Red House, the River Heritage Museum. Um, you know, just the community gardens, just, just all the things that we do. So I, I, I certainly am still a student of this position and I probably will be for quite some time um, as I find out things every day that we, community partnerships that we've established. Right. And those guys have done a great job and I want to continue to carry that momentum forward and keep developing partnerships with people in the community that we can help them and they can help us because those synergies just create better services for, for the, all the citizens of Cape. They do. and. And all of the services that you're talking about, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not just our citizens. What you find a lot of time is the services that we provide are actually utilized by people coming into our community. And, and part of Cape Girardeau, the great thing about that is they're also coming here to use our restaurants and buy, buy materials. And part of our regional hub status also has to do with, with the services that uh, that you and your your staff give to the the, the people of Southeast Missouri. Yeah, Parks and Recreation has certainly evolved over yeah. time, yeah. and a lot of societal changes have 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 caused that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people have a desire now for more organized activity. You know, whenever I was younger, you you you, you kind of self soothed, I guess, so to speak. You yeah. went outside and played, and yeah. you know, hey, when it gets dark, come inside. Um, so so people live. You know, we're, we're, things have just changed. People are busy. Um, you know, everybody's working hard and, and, and you know, playing harder to mm -hmm. a certain degree. You hear that old adage. Yeah. Uh, but people are looking now for more organized activities. So, you know, when it comes time to put their kids in youth sports or they want to go to the gym and work out or they want to go walk the trail, these kind of facilities and programs are, are really beneficial to individuals. Uh, you will have parents come in that'll have their a whole menu of things they're going to have their kids do during the summer. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. So, uh, oh, yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, we provide a lot of green space, passive activities, active activities. So the local recreation component is really really strong I mean we certainly want to that's our roots and we certainly want to maintain that but then as you mentioned you know the the the, the hub the economy the, the, how we benefit the economy the addition of a lot of these sports facilities you know the travel sports oh yeah um, you know and my kids played travel sports mm -hmm. um, and I remember going to those tournaments in Memphis and St. Louis and Nashville um, so people are coming here and, and filling our, our sports venues um, you know, mainly the sportsplex is the, yeah. the, you know, the marquee sports facility, but you know, on a given weekend, we'll fill up the hotels and the restaurants and you'll go to every restaurant in the city you'll go to and there's kids in there with, with, with sports uniforms on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, so really it, it draws a lot of people to the community and we continue, we, we see that trend continuing. Good. Uh, which, which is extremely exciting for us because our future is bright just with the nature of what we do. Absolutely. Well, Doug, thank you all for everything you do for Parks and Rec and for our, our, our community as a whole. I know it's not an easy task, uh, but we sure appreciate it. And you can tell by the support that we have by all of our residents. And um, um, as I said, thank you, Doug. Um, that's it for today. If you have questions or ideas about this program or the community, contact us at cityofcape.org slash council. And thanks, Kate. <laughs>